Hey guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah if you're new here. So today what I wanted to do for y'all was film a video about my experience going to the Emirates Open Day slash Assessment Day. Um, what happened, what to expect if you guys are going or if you're just curious about it. Um, and everything that happened from that day. So if you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you guys would subscribe to this channel um, and like this video. So if you guys do want to know more about my experience, just keep watching. So if you guys have watched some of my videos already, you would know that I mentioned that I was going to Indiana for a uh, flight attendant training. Um, and as you can see, I am not in Indiana. I am still at home. Um, and this is because I did decide to turn down that airlines because I did have a lot of other applications in progress with other airlines and um, I was going to open days and stuff like that. And I just think that personally I would fit in with these other airlines better and that they would suit me more than the one that I was going to go to originally. So I'm actually very happy with my decision to turn that one down um, and feel very confident moving forward. Okay, so let's talk about my Emirates Open Day experience. So I went there kind of like, it was like going to The Bachelor in a way. I went completely on a whim. I really wasn't expecting to move forward with the process at all. It was just kind of to gain that experience and become more confident or just meet a lot of people um, and just get to know the Emirates experience. So if I ever did want to go back, I would know what to expect. Um, and I really just went into the state thinking I was dropping off my resume and was going to be like, hi. Nice to meet you. Um, but it turned out to be the entire assessment day, so that really threw me off. But um, it was a really fun day, and I'll tell you all more about the details in a little bit. But if you guys don't already know about Emirates, it is an airline that is based in Dubai. It's literally the cream of the crop, best of the best airlines, in my opinion. They hire such a diverse a uh, range of people to work for them. It's like one of the only airlines to have that such a diverse crew where there's always going to be someone from another country, which is something that really drew me into this airline is how inclusive it is. Um, yeah, so it really is the best of the best. They have beautiful planes like 777 and 380. They're so beautiful, the first class. Oh my god. Um, a dream to fly on that. But yeah, that's a little bit about Emirates. So if I did get the job, I would have to move to Dubai, which is really crazy honestly but Dubai is so beautiful I'll insert pictures here it's just so built up it has beautiful deserts um, it's just a wonderful place to live I think huge tourist destination it has so many different activities um, so it really has a lot to offer so the open day I went to was held in Dallas Texas and I think it was like a Marriott or something or a hotel um, and we all would go up and I got there about an hour early, so there wasn't that many people there already. But the people that were there, um, I started talking to immediately, getting to know them, um, vice versa. Um, and I think that's really important because not only are you getting to meet people that you guys will be able to talk throughout the day, but who knows if there is a recruiter there that's just keeping an eye out. I don't know if there was one, I'm just assuming. But I think it's really important to make it look like you are able to just meet people and mingle with them and hit it off the bat. So I think that's tip number one is to socialize and not just sit in a corner if you're nervous. Even though that's probably what we all want to do, you have to put yourself out there. Um, and something that was so cool about this Emirates Open Day is that people flew in from literally all over the world. I met such nice people too. There was this girl from the Czech Republic. Um, people, there was this other girl that was in my group from Korea who flew in. This one guy who lived in Dubai for four years. It was just such a wide range of people that came. Um, and it was really nice to get to meet a lot of them. I think um, they were all very sweet and we all supported each other throughout the day which was good because you can be very very nervous. So um, I'm really glad I met them and it made the day even more bearable and exciting. Okay, so the day started out, um, the recruiter came around 9 o'clock is when it started. Um, we came in, we all went into the room and she gave a presentation. Um, she was very sweet which made the whole process a lot more comfortable because I think when you have a really tough recruiter who is very stern, um, it can make you way more intimidated and nervous but she was really really nice and funny and sweet so it made the day very um, enjoyable and I felt very comfortable the entire time. 
um, which is not what I expected. I was expecting to be very intimidated right off the bat because it was an Emirates Open Day, but um, it was actually the complete opposite. So after the presentation, we all got a break and stepped outside of the room um, where they we got water and food and stuff like that. Um, I They were completely out of water when I wanted it, so I literally went like the entire day not drinking water, which don't know how I didn't pass out, but I was good, I was fine. Um, so after that, we went in and they had two big circles of chairs um, and we just sat wherever. Um, and then she would put our names on the screen and we would go up in five um, and hand off our resume or CV. Um, so this was not an intimidating thing. We were all just sitting and talking and then when you see your name you would go up in line and then you would go to her where she was sitting at a desk pretty much at the front of the room. So the person in front of me actually left after the presentation so when I was standing in line and she called for the person in front of me I was like no I don't think they're here. Um, so that was kind of awkward, uh, but then she called my name and I went up to the front and handed off my resume to her and she looked at it briefly and asked me, um, what did she ask me? She asked me um, if I just graduated from college because it says it on my resume. I told her, yeah, I just graduated from Texas Tech University with a bachelor's in blah blah. And she asked me, oh, are you currently working? I told her I work at this specific place and she asked me what I do at this place. I told her that um, I take complaints and stuff like that. Gave that really short, brief description because it, you don't have a long time to talk to her. It's just these like short little statements. I told her that and then she asked me more detail about that. Like, oh, so what do you mean by that? And then I told her even more detail about that, um, what I do. So. I take complaints from clients right now and I told her how that would prepare me um, for this position um, and then that was it and I went back to my seat and then all of us that were sitting in that circle were like talking about the questions we were being asked by her like the girl next to me I remember she was from Indiana and um, she's a model so she asked her about her experience modeling so it really just ranged from what was on your resume um, so I would just say another tip number two is know your resume inside and out So if she does ask anything personal about you or about your job, you know, it, and it just comes out very natural So after dropping off our resumes is when we took the break and that was the first cut and that took about five minutes and um, It just really was based on what she saw on your resume if she thought it correlated well Maybe on your answers. I'm not too sure but that's when the first cut was so me and all the people that I was like talking to during the day, we all made it through, which was super exciting because we were all there to talk to each other and uh, motivate each other. Um, so when we went back in, oh, how you know you're making it through is she puts your number on a piece of paper and then posts it on the door and then you immediately have to go into the room. Um, so I made sure I always stood right by the door so I could just like instantly see if I got it or I didn't. Um, I was number 21. Uh, lucky number 21 like i said all me and my friends made it through and um again there was a two big circles of chairs um but this time since we all had numbers um i was 21 uh we had to one side was like one through 40 the other 50 through something i'm not too sure um, but that's how it was sectioned out and we had to find where we would be sitting so the number five or number one would be sitting in a specific chair and then we all have to talk to each other to make sure we know where we're sitting which I think it's kind of a test as well to see if you're like no you sit there or I'm sitting here you have to kind of collaborate with people and talk to them to respectfully to see where your spot is going to be so even though that seems like such a minute thing um, I think that's also a test but maybe I'm just overthinking this entire process but it doesn't hurt to just talk respectfully to people you know from here is when uh the next activity was going to begin so round two is it i'm not sure i think it's round two we're going to go with round two so in your two big circles of people that are sitting um there's gonna be groups of four within um the circle so four 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 you know um and I was with these really, really nice people. I know 
this one guy next to me and then another guy who I think this was his second time coming um, to the open day and he was very helpful when we had to collaborate which I'm going to tell you about in the group activity and then this one girl who was really sweet too she's from Korea and everyone in my group was very nice which I was very happy about um, so what this activity was is she the recruiter put a pile of pictures face down in the middle of the circle and she said that we are going to have to pick a picture um, which has just a random picture on it and as a group collaborate to create um, a story so anything and on the back of the picture it just has um, some questions that will guide you to help you create this story so the girl from my group went up and got it and we are timed I think it's five minutes to think of your story and rehearse it with your group so for example like our picture was just these women um, that were on a plane and we had to as a group collaborate and create a story out of it and um, the entire time the recruiter was going around to everyone to hear how they were talking to their group um, so make sure that you are listening to others opinions and thoughts on how to um, create the story as well as give some input so you're not completely quiet um, because she is walking around and I think even when she's not near you, um, she is probably hearing you or looking at you. So make sure you're constantly on your A game. Um, so yeah, me and my group, we created, we had like two lines each or some people had more. I was the opener since I was in the beginning of the line and I had literally two lines to say. But I think what's really important about this whole activity is not what you're saying at all, but how you're saying it. Like, are you smiling? Are you projecting your voice? Are you, um, are you nervous to talk in front of people? And something that I noticed um, as I was watching the other groups uh, perform, that's not what they were doing, say their story, is that people were not smiling at all. They looked very scared, which I completely um, can get because it's very overwhelming but no one was smiling which I see so many I watch so many videos on like tips to do this tips to do that and they're always like smile and I'm like we all know this tip don't put it in your video we all know to smile but it was really crazy how many people didn't smile they were like talking like this um, which like it's hard to smile the entire time actually like it's just hard to keep that smile on your face while you're rambling on but you have to do it. So uh, make sure to talk loud too. I know some people were talking more quietly, um, but the main thing I want to push to y'all is if you are going to this open day and you get to this round, smile, smile, smile as much as you possibly can until your cheeks are literally hurting your face. Don't let the smile leave your face. So I went up there and I was like, hi everyone, my name is Sarah. And I let the other my other group members introduce themselves, which I found that a lot of the groups um, introduced everyone one person introduced everyone else in the group which I didn't really like as much because I feel like everyone in your group should have their voice heard um, so I would I would recommend letting each person talk um, and I said my two lines and just while the rest of my group members were talking I was like smile don't forget to smile <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying it because so many people didn't smile and make sure you have you sort of let your personality come through. Don't be sterile and just give information that you think they want to hear. Like some people were like, the 380, which is the best engine in the entire world. Like, we're not, I don't think that's the point of this activity. I think it's just to have, let them know that you can talk in front of people and you're comfortable and you will smile as you do it. So after all the groups went, and I'm gonna tell you all, as all the groups were going and I was waiting for our turn, I was just saying my two lines over and over in my head to make sure it was perfect because I didn't want to stutter, I didn't want to make any mistakes, um, which thankfully I didn't, but yeah, I just rehearsed it over and over, but yeah. So after this is when the second cut was happening. So we all stepped out of the room, it took about five minutes, and um, she posted the numbers on the door, and I was like, oh my god, I really thought I wasn't going to get through because Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, literally like everybody there spoke about three languages, which I, I barely speak English, but I was like, I'm definitely not making through because you have, 
how can you compete with people who speak like 40 different languages? And I'm like, hi. They're like, and I'm like, sup. But yeah, <laughs> that's how I felt. I was super intimidated by everyone. Um, but yeah, after the first, second cut, our numbers were posted on the board and I saw my number and I was like, oh my God. And this is when a lot of people got cut. Almost everyone got cut. So I think we had about a hundred people go, if I remember correctly. And at the end, only eight made it through. So after this cut, I would say it got down to, um, let's say 20 out of like a hundred. So, a, or out of like 80, we'll say. 70? I don't, I'm not good with numbers, I'm so sorry. Um, but 20 I would say about that made it through and I was like freaking, I was like oh my god this is crazy because I, I thought immediately I was going to get cut. I wasn't expecting anything from this. Like I said I thought I was just dropping off my resume so this was crazy to me that I was actually making it through. So we went in, I was like thank you so much to the recruiter and she's like no don't thank me you, you earned it. So I was like oh, love you, so sweet, love you. Um, so yeah, we sat down and now the smaller circle, um, oh wait, was it 20? No, it was 14. And so we went in and sat in this smaller circle, now 14 chairs, and the first thing that we had to do was do the reach test, which was actually kind of hard for me because I'm 5'4 and you have to reach 212 centimeters without your heels on. So first you're measured to see if you pass the height test, I guess. And this one girl actually that made it through was too short. So I think you have to be 5'3 to work for Emirates. If I'm not mistaken, I think it is 5'3. And this girl got cut right there on the spot. So it was now six girls, I think, seven guys. I'm pretty sure. So I went up there, did the reach test, which I like really had to reach up there. Um, and luckily I could reach 212 centimeters by the skin of my teeth, honestly. And then we came, we all sat down, read this paper about, I actually could not tell you what it was about, but um, that's when the next activity began. This is not the exact question, but as an example, um, say somebody wants to be upgraded to first class, um, who are you going to choose? And then it gives you six different people to choose from, say like a person that flies with Emirates a lot, or a pregnant woman, or a vlogger so people like that and then you have to talk to your group and choose a person that you are going to want to upgrade to first class and also why you're eliminating every other person as well so again there is no correct answer in this activity it's just how you talk to your other team members how you collaborate if you're willing to listen to them, um, if you're hard-headed, if you speak too much, if you don't speak enough. You have to be so on your game, I feel like, for this because you can't not talk at all, but you can't be talking too much to overpower everyone. Um, yeah, so I tried to really make sure that I threw in some good comments and um, when I did my initial person who I would choose, I let other people say theirs and then I was like, wow, you guys made some really great points you're very convincing ha 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 like that got laughs and stuff but um i made sure to compliment them on how they were giving their suggestions um how they convinced me so just a tip is make sure that you are talking enough making your voice heard but you're not speaking over other people and you are taking what they're saying and um, you're smiling the entire time that you're listening because that's just the most natural thing to do is as you listen to people go yeah. Just like that um, So yeah, um, she's walking around from each behind you to side everywhere to see everyone and hear their voice clearly um, and she's taking notes the entire time, but make sure you're not looking at the recruiter. You're looking at your team members um, so after we had come to a final decision, um, she actually asked this one guy um, what our final decision was and why we came to that and then asked him like another question on how, a situational question, how he would handle a customer and I was like, whoo, <laughs> thank God she didn't single me out. She literally like, was like, question, and I was like, Ugh. she was sitting behind me. Um, 
But yeah, after that was done was when it was the next cut. And I was like, ugh, everyone did so good. Everyone, like, y'all are getting it. Um, and then she posted it on the door. And I was like, okay, whatever. And I saw 21, my freaking number. And I was like, how is this happening? I mean, I must be doing something right if I'm getting through these rounds. Because it seemed, the whole entire day seemed fun. It really didn't seem... I mean, obviously the entire day I was like intimidated because it's an intimidating process, but the activities were really fun and allowed me to like really talk to people. And usually when I have to talk in front of people, um, I kind of get <laughs> nervous, obviously, but this, everyone was so nice and like easy going. So it was a really fun day, honestly. I feel like I made a couple of friends. Like I really like the people that I met so after that cut, uh, the people that made it through, I think there was like eight of us. I'm pretty sure there was eight now. We went into the room and I was like, oh my God, is this, is this it? Did I get the job? Am, am I an Emirates girl? No. Um, so we went in, we went in and um, we showed her, she was like, okay, so now the next step for y'all is the final interview. And I was like, ugh. I wish it was like that day in person with her because I feel like we bonded but it wasn't so um we all scheduled our separate video interviews with someone in dubai so like for me my video interview was at 11 p.m here because we are nine hours behind dubai so it was 8 a.m for them so it was a really late video interview for me um but yeah we all showed her our pictures and uh to me the jacket i wore that day and in my picture she was like no that's too big your jacket doesn't fit you you need to show your waist so like pin it in the back um it needs to be tighter we need to see your body your silhouette i'll say um so they are very particular on how you look um for the girl next to me she was like you're not wearing it's a good picture but you're not wearing enough makeup like so you she said like make sure you wear makeup for the guys make sure it's like you're completely clean shaven and that you're everything fits so she they're very particular on how you look uh, make sure you see your waist um, you're wearing makeup your hair is perfect just everything has to be perfect I guess um, because I guess that's the standard they hold you to um, but yeah um, after that I think my video interview was it was five days later yeah I did the video interview which was to me personally the hardest interview I've ever done because it wasn't like you were um, telling your stories and then how it relayed back to being a flight attendant. You have to know every single detail about your stories from like me, I worked at Starbucks and like it was a situational story about um, like helping a customer or something. I had to know the drink that I gave them, the what did I do, how did they feel, how did I feel. You have to know every single detail about your story so don't think you can gloss over anything um make sure that you're smiling because i think um, i needed to smile more i she was very intim intimidating my recruiter that i was doing my interview with was not that friendly like she was not that friendly so i really tried my best um just a tip is know your stories inside out, know every single detail from literally how you felt, she felt, what did you do to make her feel that way, what drink did you give her, what was she wearing, what were you wearing, what date, what, like everything. Make sure you know it because um, I think that's where I slacked. I thought I knew every, my details to my stories and I think I need to know it better. Um, and also make sure that uh, I think, again, another place where I might have struggled was not showing my emotion enough because when I tell my stories, I think I am very, like, eh, 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 um, where I think I should be, like, I felt blah, blah, which I never really talk about my feelings. What are they? Um, but I guess that's something you need to do if you make to the video interview. So really to me really hard interview maybe to other people they had a nicer recruiter and they talked more about themselves but with me there was none of that so that was really fun and exciting uh, but yeah 
just make sure you're very prepared for the video interview. So as of now guys, my phone is dry. Hey guys, so I wanted to add this in because I don't think I really clarified that well, but after your video interview, your status kind of says application under review, and then the next step would be for it to say interview complete. And then after that, it would say joining formalities in progress, which kind of means you have the job, and then you would get that golden call. That's typically the order that it happens in. So as of right now, I am at interview complete. Um, so when I say that my phone is dry, it means I have not received that beautiful golden call. So right now I'm currently waiting, sadly. Literally like the freaking Dubai desert dry. Um, it's fine. I'm not internally crying. It's fine. We're fine. It's good. It's fine. Um, but it's fine. <laughs> the amount of times I just said it's fine means it's not fine, but it's fine. Um, but yeah, <laughs> life goes on. Luckily, I do have a CJO already set, um, but I do have other face-to-face -face interviews I am going to in within the next month. So knows what's going to happen, where I'm supposed to end up. Maybe it's not my time to move to Dubai. Maybe it's not, but what I do know from this experience is that I am really prepared, I think, for when I go back after six months. Um, what to expect for the video interview because that was crazy um, for me personally. I don't know other people's experiences, if it was easier for them or harder, who knows. Um, but for me, it was freaking hard. So I am more prepared for that and know what I need to change in the future to hopefully get that job and move to Dubai and work for Emirates. <laughs> um, but yeah, it really has prepared me. I think I feel a lot more comfortable going to the open days and assessments because they are actually fun guys. So as fun as an assessment day can be, if you know what I'm saying. I hope this video was very informational for you guys and gave y'all a deeper insight on what the open day and assessment day is like. If you are wanting to go or if you're just curious about the whole process, so overall, I really am happy that I went. I think it gave me a lot more confidence than I had going into um, other face-to-faces with um, different airlines. And so thank y'all so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, I would really love it if you guys would subscribe to this channel as well as like this video because um, it would really help me grow this channel and I'm going to be posting a lot more videos, so stay tuned for that. So again, thank y'all so much and I hope to see y'all in my next video.